So as we pick up with our third uh, Spider-Verse video, what we do here is we pick up with Ben Riley, Jessica Drew, and Kane. Now keep in mind, they've arrived on Earth-1, and the whole reason for this is because they've been able to trace the source of where these clones are coming from, and the clones are originating from this planet. And when they arrive here, what they find is that this version of Earth seems to be some sort of technological paradise. That is to say, it seems very uh, technologically advanced. It's really kind of how you would expect to see a future, maybe utopian planet Earth. But as they begin to move around, as they begin to look around, they realize things don't necessarily seem right. That, of course, they're moving through uh, the building they've arrived in, and they see what appear to be uh, maybe clones or some kind of individuals who, for whatever reason, are marching in a single file, and they really don't pay any attention to anybody else as if they're somehow uh, zombies of some sort. And so what we do is we see that as they're investigating, they're trying to figure things out, they ultimately uh, come across a scientist. And the scientist sees them dress up in this hospital garb, which was their choice of clothing, in order to keep a low profile. And the scientist asks them why it is that they're out of their groups, why it is that they've deviated from their groups. And so the scientist alerts the guards. Now, Kane is able to subdue the scientist to uh, basically, uh, I guess, use his webbing to adhere him to the ceiling and to keep his mouth shut. But for the most part, the damage has already been done. We see that these various uh, forces show up, begin to try to overpower the Spider-Men. But as they're able to uh, take these, these soldiers out, we see that Tony Stark arrives. Now, Tony Stark tries to fight the duo here, but of course, in the process, Ben Riley's knocked out and uh, and uh, Kane is able to knock out Tony Stark in turn. And so once Ben Riley comes to, he begins speaking with Jessica Drew. Again, this is Jessica Drew from the Ultimate Universe. And Jessica Drew says that she's been able to uh, basically dismantle the armor of Tony Stark. And when she did, they began interrogating Tony Stark. And what they asked Tony Stark is what's going on here? What the, what the whole basis is behind all these things? And what he says is that this is Genix's planet. And so what happens here is that, uh, again, as they're in interrogating Tony Stark, Tony Stark says that he's the one that's responsible for a majority of the technology that's taken place on this planet. And so all we really know here is that some point along the line, Genix appears to have somehow shown up on this planet Earth and then basically forced everybody into a state of subservience, or it could very well be that it's always been this way. We don't really know how it is this planet came to be the way that it is. But what we do know is that uh, the, I guess this uh, group of Scarlet Spiders that uh, Ben Riley and Kane and Jessica Drew decide that the only real way for them to, again, get this stuff figured out is to go directly for Genix. And so when they ask Tony Stark where Genix is at, he says that he's in the Baxter building. And so what happens here is uh, we see that Ben Riley, that Kane and Jessica Drew show up at the Baxter building. But what's going on is that uh, Kane, I'm sorry, that Ben Riley is apparently uh, dressed up as uh, as actual, as uh, Tony Stark himself. He's actually wearing Tony Stark's armor here. And the whole basis, as far as we can tell from this plan, is that, uh, that Ben Riley, dressed as Tony Stark, is basically bringing these uh, two individuals in, bringing in Jessica Drew and Kane as uh, people that he's captured, which can be taken directly to uh, to, to Genix himself. But what happens here is their plan is basically thrown awry when Johnny Storm appears. And Johnny Storm is, again, wearing some kind of military outfit indicative of uh, the kind of military outfit you would see on this planet. And it seems as though he's working for Genix. And he asked Tony Stark, what's going on? And so what we do here is we pick up with uh, Peter Parker and Superior Spider-Man. But what happens here is, again, both uh, Superior Spider-Man and Peter Parker are arguing over who it is that should lead them. What uh, what Superior Spider-Man says is that his team was holding on just fine. Dr. Octopus says that they were doing all right. They were finding a way to, uh, to keep themselves masked from the inheritors. They were putting plans together. And then Peter Parker's team stumbled in. And by virtue, they had brought Silk. And because they had brought Silk, they had drawn the inheritors to them. And so what Superior Spider-Man is basically saying here is that Peter Parker is inept as a leader. He doesn't really know what he's doing. And because of that, he really shouldn't be a leader. But again, we continue seeing them going about. We continue to see them argue. But we see that Peter Parker realizing that he is basically the previous version of himself. That is to say, he is in possession of his body before Dr. Octopus takes it over, basically calls Dr. Octopus's bluff here. He calls Superior Spider-Man's bluff and he tells Superior Spider-Man to kill him. But Superior Spider-Man says that he can't, the reason being because if he did, it would create a paradox and Superior Spider-Man would simply just cease to exist. And so while Superior Spider-Man is distracted here, Peter Parker knocks him unconscious. And so what we do is we transition back to the home of the Inheritors for a moment and we see that Solace and Morloon are speaking with one another. And what they're doing is they're talking about this prophecy. And in relation to this prophecy, what they're saying here is that three new pieces have appeared on the board, the other, the bride, and the scion. And again, we know the other appears to be Cain. We know that that was established during the uh, early events of the Spider-Verse continuity. But we also know that the bride is, uh, is Silk. What we don't know here again is who the scion is. What we're going to find at the end of this arc or the end of this story, the, I'm sorry, the end of this video, 
is that the scion is somebody we've seen this entire time. But what we do is we see that as uh, the two of them are again talking, that Solace is really kind of fed up with what's been going on here. He's really kind of been fed up about basically toying around with these different Spider-Men and Spider-Women. So what he does is he tells Morloon to gather Genix and that the three of them are going to go after all these different spiders in the safe zone. And so what happens is we jump back to the safe zone and we pick up again with Peter Parker and Superior Spider-Man. And what's happening here is the two of them have basically come to terms. I wouldn't go as far as to say that they're on the same wavelength, but at the very least they understand the necessity of there to be a leader and that Peter Parker has basically established himself as being a more capable leader than, uh, than Superior Spider-Man here. And so what happens is they begin discussing, they begin talking about the open nature of the safe zone. And what Superior Spider-Man says is they have to find some other place to go. They have to find some other place to, to travel to simply because of the fact that they're far too open here. And so what Spider-Man does is he agrees and he begins calling out to the other uh, groups who have transitioned to their own stories, of course, to Spider-Woman, to uh, to the Scarlet Spiders, to Spider-Man 2099. Now, Peter doesn't initially get a response from uh, either Kane or Ben Riley, And in fact, this is a little disconcerting to him. And the reason why is because if they're not answering their communicators, then the possibility exists that they've been killed in action. They are, in fact, dead. But of course, Peter doesn't necessarily acknowledge this as the most guaranteed thing, because again, it would tie into the fact that things are getting relatively hopeless here. And so what do we see is that he uh, calls out to Miguel O'Hara. And Miguel O'Hara says that they're continuing to try to find a place to, uh, I guess, to tap in and to autopsy this body of, uh, of, of Deimos, again, trying to escape back to a safe zone here. But what we also find out from uh, Spider-Man UK is that Spider-Woman, that uh, Jessica Drew has chimed in and told them that Spider-Man Noir is apparently out of commission. And so what Peter Parker says is that uh, he's going to take one of the cloaking devices from Superior Spider-Man and he's going to take it to Spider-Man Noir for a couple reasons. The first reason is because it will allow him to stay hidden. It will allow him to stay away, but this is due to the fact that because the Inheritors have already visited the Spider-Man Noir universe when they first came into contact, and when we were first introduced to Spider-Man Noir as part of the uh, Edge of Spider-Verse and the build-up to uh, the Spider-Verse story, he says they're most likely not going to come back, and so most likely it'll be safe for uh, Spider-Man Noir as long as no one knows he's there. But what he also asks is if there's a way to re I guess reverse engineer this uh, particular cloaking device because again these are things that have been created and tampered with at the hands of superior spider-man that have previously belonged to the inheritors and superior spider-man says that he's already modified this device and he's already traced its origin back to the home world of the inheritors which is a place they could travel to if they wanted but the problem is that if they all decided to go after the inheritors in their home world it would be a massacre because they're simply just not prepared for that and so what he says is that he has a plan and that this plan is going to involve him taking spider gwen as well as on back to the Spider-Man Noir universe to most likely grab Jessica Drew. And the reason for this is because they need someone who can go to the home world of the Inheritors and to find out what it is they're doing there, to basically uh, be their eyes and ears, to gain information and then report that information back. And so what we do as we continue with this is we see that he also sends Miles Morales as well as Spider-Man from the Ultimate Universe cartoon show to the, uh, to the I guess, an alternate reality, to various alternate realities. And the reason why, as Spider-Man explains, is because they need to to again continue the effort of gathering as many forces as they can to bolster their ranks. And so as the groups begin to splinter off, as they begin to leave, we find that Solace and Morloon and Genix arrive. And what Solace does is he begins uh, basically taunting the other Spider-Man characters, but we also see Genix and uh, Morloon doing the same thing. Now, of course, Cosmic Spider-Man appears and tells them that they were fools to come there, that there's no way they can stand against the, stand against the might of Cosmic Spider-Man. But what Solace says is that the Enigma Force, the Power Force, that Cosmic Spider-Man wields is basically pure life energy, which is exactly what him and his ilk feed on. And so what he says is that while the other members of his family may not be able to withstand the full might of the Enigma Force, that he uh, certainly can. And so what he does is he absorbs the life energy of Cosmic Spider-Man, killing Cosmic Spider-Man and the process. And so as it stands, the uh, other Spider-Man characters here are virtually defenseless. They have no safe haven. There's really nowhere they can go to now. And so of course they begin panicking, they begin taking off, trying to find places to go to, but what we also find is that while Genix is killed in the process, that Morloon is able to locate the Scion, and the Scion is revealed to us to be the, uh, I guess, the baby brother of Mayday Parker, the child uh, Benji. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. I